Hello and welcome to day 16 of 30 days of Photoshop. Today we're showing you everything you need to know about smart objects. Hello and welcome back to 30 days of Photoshop. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're showing you smart objects. Now, this is one of my favorite features in Photoshop because you can resize smart objects as many times as you want and you're not gonna lose resolution. Not only that, but if you do something like transform a smart object and wanna continue to edit it, you can actually open it up because it's kind of like a Photoshop document within a Photoshop document. So today we're gonna create a little bit of an advertisement and show you everything you need to know. So our goal here today is we're gonna create an advertisement that goes inside of this box. So let's go ahead and start off by going into our finder window and I have this other JPEG. We're gonna go ahead and click and drag this right here into Photoshop and then hit enter right up there. Now this other JPEG we're gonna be putting inside of that box but before we do, I wanna show you the difference between a smart object and a non-smart object in terms of scale. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're gonna move this one over here to the left hand side and then we're gonna duplicate this. So let's hit Control or Command J to duplicate this and we're gonna go and rasterize this layer, which means it's going to remove it as a smart object. So let's go to layer, and we're gonna go all the way down to rasterize and to rasterize smart object. So you can see this layer here, the first one we brought in, this is actually a smart object by default because I have my settings to where I import an image, it's automatically going to be a smart object. Now this image here, you can see does not have the icon here, meaning it's not a smart object. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to put a black solid color fill layer underneath those so you can kind of see the difference between them. Okay, so here for our advertisement, this is on the left hand side and this is going to be the smart object. So I'm going to hit Control or Command T and we're just going to scale this way, way, way down, like super, super small. Okay, there you can see how small it is. Now let's do the same thing here on the right hand side, Control or Command T, and we're gonna scale this way down and it's gonna be super small. So they're about the same size here. Again, this is a smart object, this one is not. So let's go ahead and take our smart object. I'm gonna hit Control or Command T and we're gonna scale this right back up again. All right, and you can see it looks great. Now this one, let's hit Control or Command T for transform. We're gonna scale this up again. I gotta keep on clicking and dragging and dragging and dragging to get it to be large again. Hit enter and you can see, wow, that's a big difference. You can see we've lost a lot of information here on the right hand side as a non-smart object, but the smart object completely retains all the information. And that's because the smart object is kind of like a container. It's actually like referencing this file. So no matter what you do to it here in Photoshop, all your edits and adjustments and things like that, the smart object, the original object retains its full like resolution. It retains all of its full properties. You're not actually able to destroy that smart object. So that's a big thing when working with smart objects. If you're gonna be resizing anything or doing filters, it's another great thing. Okay. One more thing I wanna show you with smart objects. Let's just hit Control or Command Z undo a couple of times. So these are both back to be the same size. So this time, this smart object here, again, you can see my smart object icon here on the left hand side, okay? I'm gonna to go to filter and let's go to blur and we're just gonna to go to a Gaussian blur and I'm just gonna to decide to give this a bit of a Gaussian blur, okay? Something like that. Now, this image here on the right hand side, we're going to do the same filter, filter, Gaussian blur, the same exact amount. Okay. So here's our other big difference. The image here on the left, the smart object. Now, because we made it a smart object, it has a smart filter. I can actually just turn this off and on at any time. And I can double click right here on my Gaussian blur and I can change the amount of blur at any time, or I can just simply change, turn the blur off, or I can click and drag and delete the blur at any point in time, and we're back to our original image. Now, this other layer that is not a smart object, well, guess what? That blur has already been baked into those pixels. I can't change that blur, I can't you know, remove it. The only thing I can do is delete this layer and then import it again and things like that. So if you're gonna be resizing or you're gonna be using filters, smart objects really are the way to go. Now, there's one more main use of smart objects and that comes with compositing. If you're gonna be compositing different images together, smart objects are awesome for that. So let's go ahead. We're just gonna take this image here on the right. We're just gonna delete it because we don't need this. We're gonna take this color fill layer and we're going to delete that as well. So you can see this is now a smart object here that we have with our image. And this is referencing an original JPEG. 
Now, sometimes if you want to go in and you want to like add layers and things like that to this image, what you want to do is go ahead and save this out as like a PSD and replace that as a smart object. I'll, I'll kind of like talk you through this part of the process because this is where it gets like just a tiny bit technical, but don't worry, you're going to be able to get the hang of this. Okay, so here's what we're doing. So what we're going to do is start off by, I'm going to hit control or command T for transform. Let's go ahead and scale this down. There we go. We're going to scale it down. And not only that, but I'm going to hold control or command. Let's just lower our opacity here of this layer so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to hold control or command and kind of bring this down to kind of move it into perspective. There we go. And then it's going to be kind of like the perspective of this actual advertisement. We're going to hit OK. And then I'm going to make this invisible because I got to wake up, basically make a selection right around here. OK, so to make a selection, we're going to go to the background layer. I'm going to go right over here to our selection tools. Let's go to our magic wand tool. I'm going to bring my tolerance to about 200. There we go. And then simply click here and it's going to select that white area. There we go, as we can see. And then for our advertisement, I'm going to click on my layer mask icon and then we can see our advertisement is showing up just inside of this selection. OK, now the cool thing here is let's say we want to edit the contents of this image. All I have to do is double click on my smart object and it opens up the object in a new tab. So any adjustments or anything that I make to this smart object will then automatically apply to that image in the original composition. OK, so let's go ahead and do some text. I'm going to hit T for the type tool. Let's go ahead and click and drag in here and I'm going to type in adventure await. Now, we're going to be using the new dynamic text feature. So let's go ahead and turn that on because it just makes it look way better and I don't have to do any work. Fantastic. <laughs> there we go. And let's go ahead and bring this in. So we have adventure awaits. Now this is kind of cool. We're going to go to our background layer. I'm just going to go to select and then down here to subject. So let's go ahead and select the subject here. It's going to do this on the cloud and I can put adventure awaits behind my subject. All right. It's just going to take a second here. And then we're going to go click on our adventure awaits. There we go. Hit control or command G to group that and then put that in a layer mask. Now, sometimes you need to invert a layer mask. Just simply click on your layer mask. You can hit control or command I or you can go right over here and go down to invert mask. Fantastic. Now, I'm also going to make that invisible. Let's go ahead and select our background. I'm going to go to select and then down here to color range. And let's just go ahead and click up there and hit OK. And I'm going to use that to kind of like fade this text in. So I've selected the color range of my background. I'm going to click here on my layer mask and you can kind of see that fades it in. So basically I have two masks now. OK, I have one mask that's I'm going to hold shift to click on it. One mask that's kind of like based on the light levels, the blue of my sky. And then another mask that's basically hiding in from my subject. Fantastic. Now I can actually bring this back into this image. What we're going to do is all you have to do is hit save to control command S, but you're going to get this. Uh, you're going to get this little icon here, basically a message. And what this is saying is, yeah, we can save this out. But the original format of the original smart object, that was just a JPEG. Now I can save this out as a PSD. That's totally fine. But if I want it to be the exact original, I'd have to flatten all my layers and then save that out with JPEG. And it kind of tells you what to do, but it's a little confusing here. So I'm going to tell you. The best thing to do here, OK, is just go ahead and save this out as a PSD, OK, because I, I edited the contents of the original file, but now I have layers. So technically, it's not a JPEG anymore. Technically, we're going to need to save it as a PSD. So not hard to do. Let's go to file. We're going to go down here to save as OK, and then we're going to go to save as I'm going to put this in our 30 days of Photoshop. Let's do smart objects. And we'll do a download and we'll just call this advertisement.psd and hit save. You guys can download all this stuff, by the way. OK, so we're going to click here. Just click on the link down below to, to download. I should say that. OK, so we're going back to this image here. Now, I have this as a smart object. OK, we have it linked. We have a layer mask. We have all this stuff. Now, the cool thing here is because we have a smart object, I can actually update the contents of this smart object at any time. And it's going to maintain all of my transparency. It's going to maintain our transformations, the size and scale and everything like that. So how do you do that? Well, go ahead and click on your smart object. We're going to go to layer. I'm going to go down to smart objects. And then we have all of these other options. I can edit the contents of my chart. 
uh, of my smart objects. I can reset the transform back to the original size. I can relink it to a file. I can replace the contents. I can export the contents, okay? What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to relink to file, okay? And we're just gonna go to this PSD that we just made, just this right here, and I'm gonna hit place. There we go. And then check that out. It literally just replaced that and relinked it to this file now. So we got into this file by creating a smart object, but now it's actually showing up here, which is really cool. Now, I have this layer. I'm gonna unlink the layer and the layer mask, and I'm just gonna kind of move that into space. But here, I wanna show you the kind of like the next cool thing is that I have this adventure awaits, and it looks pretty good, but here in my like little, you know, advertisement, I'm gonna hit control or command T because I actually, I wanna scale this a little bit bigger, okay? We want a little bit more impact in this advertisement. Something like this looks good. But now this adventure awaits is way too big. So I can actually go back to this font here. There we go. Let's go to our dynamic text. I'm gonna unlink the width and the height there. And then we're just gonna go ahead and make this a little bit smaller, okay? There we go, adventure awaits, and we're gonna put it, there we go, command enter. We're gonna put it right about there, and I'm gonna still do this, okay? So I can make an update. Now, the cool thing here is because I have this as a PSD, remember, we linked it so it's visible here. All I have to do is save this. Control or command S to save here, and it automatically updates here in this document. Let's say now I wanna move my text up just a little bit, something like that. Control or command S to save, and then it automatically shows up there. I can just make this a little bit smaller, Control or Command T, there we go, and move it up a little bit there, Control or Command S to save, and then it's automatically going to update there. So anytime you have an asset that you wanna continuously update, that's a great time for a smart object as well. Basically, either you can just bring an image in and then create a smart object from scratch, or you can link it to a Photoshop document that you've already created, or you can do it in the way that we did, where we literally just brought that in as a JPEG, and then saved it out as a PSD and then relinked it. Okay, now there's one more cool thing I wanna show you for this. Let's go to our smart object background here. But you know what? I kinda, I like the effect where it was kinda like behind our subject. So let's hit Control or Command S to save that again. Okay, and now you know what? Maybe we'll just bring this up. There we go, adventure awaits. Cool, that's looking pretty good, right? Now we actually have like what we want. But there's one more effect. This is just a total bonus and it's really cool and I wanna show you how to do it. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make this advertisement invisible. Now this background layer, you can see there's actually some light information here, but it's kind of hard to see. Like if I zoom way in, you can see there's like reflection and light information. I wanna extract that and then put it over top of the advertisement. It's gonna make it look a lot more realistic. So to extract that, we're gonna hold Control or Command and click here on the layer mask. Control or Command and click on the layer mask of my advertisement that we already created. Now here in the background layer, I'm gonna hit Control or Command J and then bring this up to the top. So Control or Command close bracket. And then I'm gonna hit Option Command G, which is going to clip this. So this basically is gonna be visible just where our advertisement is visible. So what we've done here is made a selection of our mask, which is basically just inside this you know white area. Okay, we duplicated that from our background layer, and then I popped that over to the top and then clipped it so it's only visible where the advertisement is. So this is the this is basically the reflection. Okay, now we're gonna change this layer mode from normal down here to screen. I'm gonna right click and we're gonna go to convert to smart object because I wanna run a levels adjustment on this. And right now I can't really see through it because it's just kind of like white. So when I set this to a screen blend mode, light areas are gonna be visible, dark areas are not gonna be visible, okay? So what we need to do is on this reflection, let's just double click and call this reflection, there we go. What we need to do is on this reflection, I'm gonna hit Control or Command L for our levels, okay? Now you can see it wasn't completely white, it was just almost, it was almost completely white, but it wasn't completely white. So I'm gonna take my black point and click and drag this from the left to the right now, and you're gonna see, it's just gonna make my darks a little bit darker, okay? And next we're gonna take our midpoint and click and drag this right over here. It's just something like this, okay? And we're able to extract the light areas of our reflection. Now, again, it wasn't completely black. It was just kind of like mostly black. There we go. So we have something like this, fantastic. And we can actually see, this is the reflection information that was in the original sign. You would never see that except for if you did something like this. So let's go ahead and hit okay. 
Now, I did this levels as a smart object. Again, this video is all in smart objects, so I could change this at any time. But basically what we're gonna do is I've got this set to screen. You could set this to something like a soft light if you wanted to do that, okay? And you can kind of see through it. Or you could go back to screen and simply lower your opacity and you have a little bit of the original reflection. Keep in mind, I can go and double click here on our levels and I can change these levels at any time. If I want this to be like, you know, really like less visible, a little bit more visible, I can change these reflections and kind of decide how they're gonna fade in with my original image. And of course, lowering the opacity just makes sense because now we have this, but this is cool now. It's a subtle, subtle thing, but these are the actual reflections. If I just make this visible and invisible, these are the actual reflections of this image that were there. You wouldn't even know it, except for if you did this sort of thing and extracted them and run hardcore levels on this. But here's, I'll just turn this levels off. You basically can't see it, it looks totally white. But with our levels back on, now I'm able to make the darks way darker and it's just going to show me the lights. And it's a subtle effect, but this is the actual reflections of this poster. So the composite now looks a lot more real, even though it's nice and subtle. This is exactly what we want. So we've used a lot of different things for smart objects. Remember, originally we brought this image in, we made one a smart object, one not a smart object. We resized and show you how you keep resolution when you resize. We also showed you how you can use smart filters with smart objects. That's a really, really important thing. And then being able to edit the contents of a smart object, save that out as a PSD and then link to any smart object at any time to replace your files that is huge so all these things combined and we showed you yeah basically everything there is to know about smart objects so i guess the moral of the story is smart objects are amazing uh the only downside with them is they do take up a little bit more file size so that's the thing um but if you find you're going to be editing something and like you have like this a composite where you you're you have a composite and you want to edit the original image and then kind of update it and see how it looks in the composite over and over again, smart objects are definitely the way to go. And if you're applying any type of filter in smart in Photoshop, smart objects are also the way to go. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this. I know we covered a lot in a very short period of time, but this is how smart objects work. And uh, yeah, I love them. I think they're awesome. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue our series here in 30 days of Photoshop. Thanks again. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.